right, good afternoon, crew. Um, I see it, my regulars here, which is pretty exciting. So today's webinar is all about my personal favorite tech tool. Uh, you'll heard it called two things. So the real name of it is Formative, but their website is actually Go Formative. So you'll also hear it called Go Formative. Um, they're both the same thing, I promise. I love this tool and I used it all the time when I was teaching in the classroom because of its data tracking abilities and then the ease of using PDFs. So those are my two big reasons there. There's lots of other really cool features about it that we'll get into shortly. Um, we did start talking about formative last week when we were talking about formative assessment tools. We had to rush to get through and even then we didn't get through everything. So I wanted to really take time to look at all of the cool features of this tool today. So with that said, we have an entire hour dedicated to formative, whether we take that long or not, we'll see. Um, but I did want to make sure we had plenty of time. We're going to start back at the beginning with what is it and maybe why should I use it? And then we'll actually dig in and start looking at how do I log in, how do I find or create formatives, and then how do I sign up to my students. And then we'll look at the data piece. So how do I review their work um, and grade their responses as well. So something to keep in mind, this is yet another tool <laughs> that is not currently approved um, for use with student accounts. So we do not yet have a data privacy agreement with this particular company. Um, this is one that I am fighting hard to get um, on file so that we can really use all of the cool features of the tool. Um, with that said, we do have the ability to assign it to guests, and so we'll look at what that uh, will entail as we kind of dig into that step two today. So with that said, let's kind of jump in. So what is GoFormative or what is Formative? Um, it is just another formative assessment tool. It reminds me a little bit of how you would create a Google Form quiz. Um, so you have all of those different question types and things like that, but some of the advantages to using Formative over Google Forms, um, and this is why I made the switch to begin with, uh, with Formative, your students are able to go back in and pick up where they left off. So if the period ends and they have to leave, they can come back the next day and continue on. Um, that's really hard to do with Google Forms. There is a really, really complicated workaround. Typically what happens is that if students are not done with the form, a Google Form, they have to submit it whether they're done or not. Otherwise, when they close out, they lose all of their work. So it does auto save um, and then students can jump back in. So that's one of the big advantages to using Formative over Google Forms. Um, and like I said before, the other cool thing is that it's a really easy way to take a PDF that you might have, so a worksheet that you might have out there, and make it interactive without having to go through Google Slides. And so we'll look at that um, today as well. Other things that I love about Formative, the data tracking piece is awesome. You can tag your questions by standard and then you can track their progress over the course of time. Um, in a particular standard. Now the free version, because this is one of those freemium tools, the free version allows you to track two weeks of data, um, whereas the pro or the paid version allows you to track all of the data so you can go back as far as you need. Um, so that is one of the limitations of the free version is that you can only look back two weeks um, to see that data, but still a valuable piece of information. So with all of that said, why should I use it? Because of all of those reasons. All right, so we're gonna go live from here. Let's look at step two. Let's actually dig in uh, and build a formative. So to get there, the website is goformative.com. And I'll put that in our chat if you wanted to follow. Uh, I don't know if I spelled that right. Let me try that again. There we go. Okay, so again, that's why a lot of people will call it Go Formative, even though the actual name is just formative because their website, the website formative.com was already taken by the time they came up with their idea, so. All right, you'll get to the login page. And if it's your first time, um, you'll need to click on sign up. And then I'm a teacher. So sign up, I'm a teacher. And then I always suggest we sign in with Google anytime we're given that opportunity. GoFormative is another one of those tools that syncs nicely with Google Classroom. So if you're logged in with your Google account, it makes that really easy to do. So I'm gonna sign in with Google. And then for me, it's gonna recognize, I believe at least, it should recognize my account. Oh, it's not, okay. 
Um, so at this point in time, you'll land on this screen if it's your first time in, um, and you'll want to find your school. So I think all of you have assigned schools, so that works well. Um, and then your students call you, so I would say Miss Cheatham here, and then agree. And then you'll be all set up. I already have an account. I don't want to sign up with a new one, so I'm going to back out and just log in. Oops. So once you do have an account made, when you go to GoFormative.com, you'll click on log in instead and sign in with Google. All right. And then when all is said and done, hopefully you land here on your homepage here. Now, um, you land where your formatives are housed. So it's kind of like how in your Google Drive you have folders. You can also create and organize them into folders if you wanted to. Currently, I don't have very many created in this particular account, so you don't see that. Um, I do have multiple formative accounts, so <laughs> it's a fun little fact. Okay, so if you don't see any here, that means that it's time to create our first one. So to create a new formative, it's super simple. There's a plus button that says new formative, and we're going to go ahead and click on that. All right, so this is what you get when you click on that. It looks like nothing, but um, some things to, to know about firsthand. In the top left-hand corner, it works just like a Google Doc or Slide or any Google product. You name your GoFormative by clicking where it says add your title here, and then you can title it from there. So this is my webinar sample. Okay, and it does, like I said, it auto saves really nicely. So I don't have to, there's no save button on here to click. As I'm typing and adding things, it will automatically save them. Okay, and now let's go ahead and start adding content and then we'll look over at our other features at the top. So adding content, super simple. Start with that plus button always. So I'll click on that bouncing plus button and it will pull up this little menu. And this shows me all of the different content options I have. Now you'll notice that some of them are grayed out and they have the star. Those are the ones that are premium features. You would have to pay to see those. Um, with that said, you can get a lot of the free features. So if you are just using this occasionally, um, those free features work just fine. The biggest limitation in my opinion in the free version is that you only get a certain number of PDFs that you can enhance in a month. And I personally use that all the time when I was teaching. So this is a tool that I chose to pay for myself. I'm not trying to sell it to you, but I'm just letting you know that that was my reasoning. Um, I did a lot of enhancing PDFs and 19 was not enough for me. So just kind of a limitation in the free version. Otherwise the question types were adequate for me. Um, it was nice when I paid to have the other options, but I didn't find that I needed them. The big thing, if you are trying to accommodate for students, the biggest thing that comes in that paid version that you don't get free is that audio piece. So you couldn't do read aloud, um, not easily at least, within GoFormative. Now you could use an outside program to read aloud, but not within. All right, so let's look at some of the things we can do. Um, the things that are in red here, those are just things that you want students to see. They're not necessarily responding in any particular way. So in like a Google form, those are your options that were on the right hand side where you can add things. So that was like adding a video, adding text. It's the same idea in GoFormative. Um, so the first thing we can add that's free is we can embed something. So if you had, for example, a Padlet and you wanted to embed that Padlet, you could do that because in Padlet you can get the embed code. So anything that has an embed code, you could embed on your GoFormative. Now, most things have an embed code somewhere. Um, notice that in my embed, so this is what happens when I clicked on embed, it, it's asking me for, for that embed code to paste it in, but notice that it also asks for a Google Drive share link. So I am also able to embed Google Drive files. So if I had Google Slides, for example, I could embed them here. So I'm gonna grab these slides and let's try it. All right, so I copied those shared and then I can embed them right in. So it's not just necessarily a formative assessment feature, I could also use it to teach. Okay, so here's the resource, look at it, and now let's move on and ask you some questions about it. So it embedded those slides really nicely for me. All right. I could also, like I said, I could embed something else. So let me find a Padlet, for example, in my Padlet library to embed from there. 
So again, this is great for adding some extra instruction to the beginning of your formative. Here's the content and then we'll ask. Okay, of course, I archived all of my good ones here. Um, I'm gonna put this one. Okay, so I want to share this one. So let me go ahead and get our embed link or our embed code. That's modify, that's not what I meant, share. There we go. All right, so when you're in Padlet, by the way, you can always get that embed code, that's your share button. And then you have that option to embed. So this is what I need to copy. And now in my webinar sample, I'm gonna embed and then I'll paste. And then, I don't know if it'll work. Huh. All right, well, apparently it's not liking that embed code, but typically it would have, it would have pasted that nicely. It's kind of funky. So I don't know what's going on with my Padlet here. Um, but I think you kind of get the idea that I could embed some other resource right into my formative. I wonder if we could try it with Edpuzzle. Let's see if I can get an embed code for Edpuzzle. I am bound and determined to give you a good example here. <laughs> um, all right, let's try this one, see what happens. So I'm gonna get rid of that one. We're gonna do this one and there we go. Okay, so there we go. Now I have my Edpuzzle video. So that's another thing I could embed nicely into my formative. Here's my video with some questions already and now here's how I want you to apply it. So now let's add some more content. So that was embed. I could also add an image. So in my plus image here, I have two choices that either needs to come from my computer or it needs to be saved on my Google Drive. So something to consider if you wanted to use a, um, an image from a Google search, you would need to either download it to your computer or save it to your drive first. So that's with my image. And I'm gonna get rid of that. By the way, so I'm in my question right here or in my content right here. If I wanna get rid of it, You'll notice that on the right hand side, there's a little trash can. The button next to that is to duplicate it if I wanted to make an exact copy. So I'm gonna get rid of it. All right. I could also add just a text block. So this is great for directions. Okay, again, it's just information for my students to see. They're not answering any questions associated with this text box. All right, I could add a video. So I could go ahead and find a link on Google, on my Google Drive. I could find a Vimeo or a YouTube video. So any of those, I would need to find the link. So it doesn't work quite as nicely as all of the Google products where it lets you search YouTube um, because YouTube is not a product that GoFormative owns. It doesn't sync nicely that way, but all I would need to do is open a new tab and go to YouTube and find that link. So it's not super complicated. Um, so that wouldn't be too hard to do. So if I wanted to use this one, I could just use this link. When I first saw this product, I thought it looked kind of crazy. Okay. And then I'll just paste that in that spot and update and it will add that video. So super simple, not, not complicated. The last kind of red content that I can add here is that whiteboard feature. So if I wanted to draw out some steps to something, this is like what I would write on my whiteboard in my classroom, I could add that whiteboard and what it will do is put this little kind of placeholder here and then I would come in and edit it. And now this works just like your whiteboard tools that you see in Zoom and on some of those different websites. Um, so you can come in now and you can write on it. I'm terrible at writing with my mouse, so. <laughs> um, you could add in lines in different shapes, images, text boxes. So you have all of those different writing features within your whiteboard. We'll come back and look at this whiteboard when we get to our question types. Right now, we're just showing them something. So we're just adding something for them to look at. I'm just drawing something for them. Later on, the students will actually have a chance to interact with what I put in a whiteboard. So that's our whiteboard within that that red add content section. So those are the different content types that I can add ahead of time. And now I have the options to add questions about that content. 
So my first free question type is my essay. And my essay is exactly that. It is a long answer. Um, with an essay, it is not going to auto grade. So something to kind of consider, I could ask a question. Whoops. And my questions go at the top in the space where I'm typing right now. And then here, I do have the option to create an answer key, but like I said before, it's not going to auto grade. So this is more for my knowledge, just so I remember what I'm looking for in a correct answer. So I can come in here, I clicked where it said add a correct answer, and I might add, you know, what am I looking for? I want it to be, I don't know, um, mentioned vocabulary correctly. This is, again, just for me, so I remember what I'm looking for. And then I could add more kind of criteria underneath where it says add a correct answer. I can click and add more. Um, I put those in the wrong order, but it's fine. So if I was asking a question about um, producers, consumers, and decomposers, I might be looking for that interaction. So again, these are just for my knowledge. Um, the other thing that I would want to do, it's an essay question. So the default point value that it gives to every single question is one point. I can change that, but it's kind of hidden up in the right hand corner where we found the trash can before in that duplicate button. Right next to that, I also have a place where I can change that point value. Right now it says one point. I'm just going to click where it says one. And when I put my cursor there, it allows me to type. So I can make this 15 points, for example. All right. And then down underneath, all of these are um, paid features, so they're not going to work for us. Like I said, it's not going to auto grade it, so it doesn't really matter right now. Um, with the paid features, you could allow a partial match, in which case it would auto grade some of it, so it's looking for um, some of this information. But with an essay question, you're going to physically grade it anyways. And then the most important part, one of the reasons why formative is so awesome, with every question, you have the option to tag a standard. So you'll click on tag to standards. You'll probably need to add a new standard set your first time in. Um, so doing that's really easy. You'll click on add new standard set. You'll find Texas. And then you'll find your particular set of standards. So I have math and science added, but if you were, for example, social studies, you would click on social studies and then your grade level and then confirm and exit. And so now it's gonna happen when I go to tag standards, it's gonna pull up all of the standards that I have selected. So I have math, science, and now social studies as well. And then, or maybe I just have math and social studies. Then I can even start to search. So if I know that this is a math standard, of course it's not gonna work. I could look for 5.2B, that's not a real thing. My goodness, <laughs> it is. I don't know why it's not coming up, but I could start to nail down and find that standard and select it there. And now what it's gonna do is it's going to look for this standard in all of the formatives that my students have completed in the last two weeks in the uh, free version and show me their performance on this particular standard over time, which is really cool. So we will look at that at the end today where that information will be, but um, in order for it to work, you do need to tag those standards. And you can tag multiple. So now it's tagged one. If I wanted to tag another one, I could just start kind of digging in and tag another. All right. Along with adding my question, I kind of skipped this part, my apologies. As I'm adding in my question, you might have noticed I also have this little plus button. So with my question in the free version, I could also add an image to go along with it or the math formula um, to go along with it. So those are my two free version things. In the paid version, I could add that audio where I'm reading the question. I could also embed something. I could add emojis and I can add video. So those are all paid features, but in the free, I could add an image or a math equation. All right. Let's go ahead and look at another question type so that then we can talk about reordering. So I'm going to use that plus button again. So you'll notice as I'm kind of scrolling up, we'll actually see little plus buttons throughout. So as I'm going, if I decide, ooh, I don't want this to be question one, I want to add a question before it, I'll look for the little plus button that's above it. 
And when I click on that, it's going to bring up that same question menu, but now it's going to put whatever I select here in front of question one. So it's going to bump that other question down. And now this one's going to be my new question one. So with that said, let's look at our second free option and that's our multiple choice. And notice that it put it as question one and then my other question, my say questions underneath it. All right, works the same way. So I start typing where it says type your question. Um, I always go back to science. <laughs> all right, so I have my question here. And then I want to add all of my answer options underneath. So where it says type option, that's where I'll start. Um, Okay, so there's option one. I could say, okay. All right, so I'm just gonna keep clicking until I've decided that that's enough options. In this case, I'll keep it at three, okay. And now to select the correct answer because this one will auto grade, I'll just click on that little bubble that pops up by the correct answer. So in this case, I'll click here. It'll put a little check mark in it. That's telling me that one's the correct answer. My other two are incorrect, so no points will be given for my incorrect answers. Um, again, you have these paid features here. So if you really, really think that there's a lot of value in randomizing the order, you can look into the paid features. Um, and then show your work is actually a brand new paid feature here that allows you to have show your work with the actual question. We'll look at what show your work looks like because just show your work is free. Show your work associated with a question is paid. So we'll look at it in just a minute, what that looks like. All right, and then otherwise you have those same options. So those little plus buttons to add um, some different things. So with our question, we can again add that image in math. On the answer choices in the free, we can only add math equations. All right. And then again, I can change that point value if I want. And then I can tag some standards. So same thing as before. All right. So that's our multiple choice question. If you have questions as I'm going or need me to slow down, just let me know. Um, otherwise, I am going to continue here. So I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom where my big blue button is again. And I'm going to add a question three here. And so we get, did essay, we did multiple choice. Let's look at multiple select. That's just like your text box question in Google Forms. So it works the same way. Um, all right. And then underneath that, you can go ahead and start typing answers. Oops. Okay, and again, as I click add option, I get that little box underneath. So it adds a new one each time. Um, Etc. cetera. Mm, I need one more. Oh, this is hard. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna cheat and just say plant. Okay, and now just like with our multiple choice to select our correct answers, because again, this will auto grade, I can go ahead and just click the boxes next to my correct answers. And with our free version, if my students don't mark all three as producers, then it will give them zero points for this question. However, I do always have the ability to go in and override it. So we'll look at that when we look at grading. Again, I can change my points and we're good to go. All right. Um, again, you have those paid options here just to kind of look at if we wanted to randomize the order we could, otherwise you will need to type them in the order you want them to show up. So kind of keep that in mind as you're building your question with the free version, you probably don't want all three of the correct answers at the top. All right, and then I'm gonna hit plus to add another. Okay, we're getting there. Next up is short answer. With our short answer, this will auto grade as long as they match my correct answer exactly. 
Um, so kind of keep that in mind as you're thinking of questions to use with short answer. This works great with something like fill in the blank um, or with math. So if you're asking questions with equations and things like that, then it works awesome with that. So if you wanted to ask them, for example, what is, um, let's just say we're gonna do 12 times six, okay? Um, you could do that and then when you add your correct answer, you would just say whatever that correct answer is. And it will auto grade, like I said, if they put 72 exactly, it will auto grade that nicely. Now it does allow you to add additional correct answers. So I used to have to do this a lot when I was teaching things like decimals um, or sometimes even fractions. Uh, sometimes my kids would write, like if the correct answer was uh, 0 0.72, sometimes they would write it that way, sometimes they would write it this way. So depending on whether or not I wanted to be a stickler for how they write their decimals, I would give them both options as correct so that that way um, it would catch both. So if they put either one of these, it would mark it as correct. Same thing goes if you're looking for a word. I don't know, oh, it is. So if it is in the free version, it's not case sensitive. You have that ability to turn it on if you are using the paid version. So I guess it doesn't matter. Um, but sometimes like plural versus non, if the answer is friend and they typed friends, are you gonna accept that? If so, you'll want to add both options as correct. All right, um, our short answer again, auto grades, which is beautiful. I'll leave that at one point. Our next option is that option that keeps uh, showing up as a paid feature, show your work. So instead of it being associated with another question type, this stands on its own. So with show your work, you could say something like, um, And then I'm just, I don't have the brain power to think of things to include, but I could ask them to draw me something, okay? I can come in on the teacher side and I can add aspects of the background if I think that will help. So what I might do is add some different images um, that they might need to use in their water cycle, or maybe I'll add in those labels so that then they can come in later and drag them. So I could give them a starting background, there it is, or I could leave it blank, it's up to me. All right, but then on the, the student side, they'll get to now come in and they have all of these different editing features as well. So they can come in and use their drawing tool to show me the cycle. They can add images to their, their show your work question so that I can then come in later and view what they've drawn and manually grade it. So again, this one's not going to auto grade. I have to manually grade it. Um, and we'll look at what that looks like in just a second. But I can come in and give them a preset background to start with, or I could not, it's up to you. This is great for math, by the way, uh, for show your work kind of problems. Um, if you're looking for them to show you how they used a model or to draw out their steps as they balanced an algebraic equation, it's an awesome tool for that. All right. And then our final question type in the free version is that true false. Okay, and that's pretty simple. Yep. <laughs> all right. Um, and again, all of those same features, I could add images here, um, that page, show your work is available, and then I could tag those standards. I also want to point out if at any time I'm starting to build my question and I realize, ooh, this is not the correct question type, I have the op option to change that right here. This is a drop down. So I can come back in and choose one of these other question types as I'm building rather than having to delete the question and start over. So always an option to switch your question type halfway through. All right, before we get to our um, PDF here, I wanna show you, you have the option as you're going to reorder your questions. If you realize you don't want this to be your last question, I can change that around. You'll notice next to my question number six here, I have these six dots. And when I hover over them, notice that my cursor changes. That means that this is something I can click and drag. So I'm gonna click and drag this, and I could click and drag it, maybe. 
course, it's not going to let me scroll. There we go. My scroll is real slow. I can click and drag this somewhere else in my formative. I just moved that all the way to the top <laughs> of my formative, um, but I could have clicked and dragged it elsewhere. My uh, cursor's not being very cooperative right now. It's going either really fast or not at all. So we're gonna drop it right wherever it goes. All right, that's apparently gonna go there. But again, I could click and drag and move things around. All right, let's look at my favorite feature. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna click that plus button one more time. So we looked at those blue and those red options. I wanna look at this yellow option. So the coolest thing about this is that it's really easy to take a pre-existing worksheet that you have and make it interactive by clicking on enhance a PDF. So I'm gonna click here. I have to have that PDF either saved on my computer or on my Google Drive. And then keep in mind that I do have a limitation here. I only have, I think it's 20, in the month, I have 19 because I've already used one. Um, but if I do upgrade, that's when I get unlimited uploads per month. I just have to do only 25 pages at a time. Um, so that was pretty awesome. For me as a teacher, I needed that unlimited access. So I'm gonna find a PDF on my computer. Uh, and let's go ahead and, oh, it's already, it's already sorted by file type. How about that? Okay. So let me see if I can find, I don't know what this is. We're gonna find out something about coordinate planes. Okay, so it does take a little bit of time to process your file depending on how many pages it is. So hopefully this is not too big, <laughs> we'll find out. Um, but once it finishes processing, we'll get the little image of that PDF pop up here and then it will show me like I'll see each individual page. Uh, like I said, it's being very slow. There it goes. Okay. So here is page one of that PDF file, page two, page three, as I scroll down, obviously I don't need all of these. Oh, and this is a really bad example. So to delete a page, all I need to do is find that page and use that trash can. And I want to remove it. And I'll do that for each one I want to delete. And I'm looking at this, and this is a really bad example already, so I'm going to get rid of them all and start from scratch here. Let's find a better one. So just try number two here. And notice that because I deleted those pages, I get back to that 19 page limit. It did not use any of those pages. All right. Um. Let's try this one, let's see what happens. Okay, so this is a PDF worksheet, if it'll ever load, of some multiple choice questions, some short answer and some long answer, awesome. So this is something that I might have used in my classroom, uh, paper, pencil, but obviously now in today's day and age that makes it tricky. Um, also, I would use this even if I were in the classroom right now, informative, because some of these answers will auto grade like one and two, so that gives that immediate feedback and that's really powerful. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start putting questions in here. So it adds this PDF and now to add questions, all I need to do is click where I want those questions to appear. So I want a question to appear next to number one on my worksheet, so I'll click next to there. And I get that same, those same question options here and this is a multiple choice question. So it puts that question next to there and now on my right hand side, I could retype the question, but the question's pretty legible. I don't really think I need to. Instead, I'm gonna leave that blank. I'm gonna look at A, B, C, and D. Oh, those options are already there for me. I don't have to make any changes there. All I need to do is mark the correct answer. And honestly, I don't remember, so I'm just gonna make it up. All right, and then now that one's done. Um, like I said, as my students are taking this, that will auto grade for them. So they'll see immediately whether they got it right or wrong, which is pretty cool. Same thing for the next question. I'll just click again. It'll add that question. That's also a multiple choice question. I don't have to type anything because it's already there. I just need to go ahead and mark the correct answer. So super simple. Now notice that as I'm qu adding questions, it's adding them in this little kind of drop down slider menu on the side. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind that if you can't see the question you just added, you will have to scroll down. All right, and then I would just keep adding questions. This one's short answer. 
And then I could add an answer option, or in this case, it's probably, it's an explain one. So I'm probably not gonna add an answer option because that's something that I'll have to auto or manually grade anyways. And then my last one, long answer question, I'll give it an essay, okay? I could do an, uh, I could do the extra question as well if I wanted to, just to keep it simple. All I'm doing is popping those questions in. So that was real quick. I didn't have to do a whole lot of work there. I'm using a resource that I already have created or already have ex that exists to make it interactive. So super simple. All right, so that was adding that to a PDF. Like I said, not too tricky. Let's go ahead and let's look at what this looks like from the student view. So as you're building, you do have that opportunity to preview it. It looks the same as it does in your Google form um, in that that symbol is also the eyeball. So up at the top of my page in that blue bar, I have the little eyeball. I'll click on that. And it gives me three different preview modes. Right now I'm previewing it in a mobile device mode. I have the tablet mode. And then if I wanna see it on a laptop, it'll fill the whole screen. And then this is what the students will see. Oh, they see those slides. They see this question. Here's that Ed Puzzle video. Here's that other YouTube video. My whiteboard, again, that was just one that I added. It wasn't something for them to interact with. A multiple choice question. Their paragraph question. There are multiple select, so we're seeing all of these different previews. Okay. And then here's that show your work. So now they're prompted to show your work. They get their directions on the right hand side and then all of those drawing tools over here. So they could come in and they could add images. This allows them to search the web, by the way, um, if they open up a new tab and they're looking for a sun picture, for example, um, they could go ahead and copy that image address. So that would work for them. So I'm gonna take that, we'll do that right now. Copy image address, and that's what um, image URL it's looking for. And hopefully that'll add nicely. I don't know where it went. Okay, I don't know where my picture went. I added one, but it's not there. <laughs> Um, but again, like I said, they have all those different drawing tools to work with. All right. And then underneath that, here's our PDF. It looks pretty similar to what it looked like for me as I was building it. So on their end, they see the PDF on the left-hand side, and then their questions are on the right. Because I didn't type their questions out, they'll have to refer back and say, okay, that's that, okay, that's that. And then type in their answers as they go. Okay. So again, that's what it looks like from the student view. You can see that as you're building really easily using that little eyeball. All right, before we look at assigning it, the last thing I wanna show you within the building, I'm gonna click that plus button one more time. There is one that we didn't look at and that's that search from existing questions. Now I will say I have not been super impressed with GoFormative's library of things. So kind of keep that in mind. But if you're looking for, there's a lot of math things on there in particular. So if you're looking for something math related, you might want to start here. Um, so I'm going to search the library and let's, let's see what's out there about producers. Because that's what we talked about so far. And then I can see just in this little preview, here are the ones that have, have to do with my search term. I can see what grade level they're tagged for and what content level. And so like I said, there's not much. <laughs> I'm seeing one in its eighth grade science. Um, so whether or not that is applicable to me is questionable, but all I have to do is click on that and I can preview it on the right hand side. And I don't see anything in here that I would want to use. This is not related at all to producers and consumers, but let's see if I can find one in here. No. I don't want these. My goodness. All right, let's get rid of our... All right, let's see. Let's go back to this one. Okay, so let's say I want to add this question. All I need to do is hover over it and you'll notice that I have that little add button and I'll just click add. And it added it in the background here. I'm gonna close out of my little library and you notice that it adds it along with the answer key. 
So just a real quick, easy way to find questions to add, but do keep in mind that I'm not super impressed with their library. There doesn't seem to be much in it right now. All right, so let's say that this is the end. We have built our formative and we're ready to assign it. So this next thing that we need to do um, is up at the top. So we looked at how to title things and then we kind of skipped over to our eyeball. Um, we skipped right over that middle section. In that middle section right now I'm on edit, but I can toggle over to assign. And if I were using it with Google Classroom, and I've already added my classes, it's real simple, I'll just click on that class. Now, I don't wanna do that right now though because we don't have a data privacy agreement, so instead, I wanna click on guest students. And now I wanna show you, I could assign it as is, but my favorite thing to do is to dig into these additional settings here. So underneath that, I have adjust settings. And now some of these are paid features. So a little disappointing that I can't, um, only have certain students take it, or that I can't schedule it, or that I can't put the questions in random order, but there are some really cool things. So after submission, I can decide, do I want students to be able to see it without editing it? Do I wanna hide it completely? Or do I want them to come back in and be able to edit it even after they've submitted it? So three different options depending on the type of assignment or assessment you're giving. Next to return, return scores, right now it says don't show scores. I have the option to show them immediately after they submit. So it'll show them right then and there how they did. I like to use the instantly option. So if I were using this as a teaching tool rather than an assessment tool, as they're working, I want them to see right away whether they got it right or wrong. And what will happen is that if they got it wrong, it will turn red. Uh, there's a little circle at the top that'll turn red, and we'll look at this um, in a different uh, go formative example in a minute. Whereas if they got it right, it will turn green. So they get that instant feedback without me having to sit there and tell them, oh yeah, that's right. Oh, oh no, that's wrong. Um, so instant feedback is really awesome with that return scores instantly option. I could also choose to not show them the scores at all, or to only show the scores when I physically go in and close it. Um, and that's a cool feature because I can make sure that all of my students have taken it first before I release those scores. Um, and again, that's when I select the when closed because I will manually have to go in and close it. So I'll keep it with don't show scores for now. And then I also have the option to, show, or to choose when they see their correct answers. So scores is just telling them this is how you did overall. Returning correct answers is telling them exactly what the right answer was. And again, I could do it immediately after they submit it. I could choose not to at all, or I could choose to do that when I close the assessment. So some different options in those adjust settings that I like to click on all the time. <laughs> and then when I'm ready to go, I'll click on assign. Okay, so it will automatically take me over to view responses, but I get this pop-up window because I selected that it's being assigned to guests. I get these directions, but for most of our teachers at this point, um, they have some options here. They can either get a link and then send that link out. They could post it to Google Classroom. However, um, I don't think we have this option because we didn't sync our classes with Google Classroom. So in the future, they're able to do it, but not right now. And then if they had a Google site or something, they could embed it in that. So right now what I would do is I would choose the link option. I'll right click my link. I'll copy link address. And then I would jump over to my Google Classroom. And in my Google Classroom, I would create a new assignment. Okay, and I would add that as a link. So I'm gonna paste that link that I just copied, and then I might give them instructions and do all the rest here, but that's how I would assign it to my students right now, given that we cannot import their, those classes into GoFormative. Um, so, not too bad. But then I have that link copied, so it's already on my clipboard. So let's look at it from the student end. So I'm gonna open up an incognito window and paste that link. Okay, and so when students click on that link in my Google Classroom, it takes them here. 
Um, so you would want to give them specific instructions for how they enter their name here. I don't think it's super harmful for them to enter first and last name, but if you're worried about that, tell them first name, last initial, or something like that. And then clicking on join will get them in. Okay. Oh. And of course, it's not going to show me my slides for some reason. That's not nice. I think it's because I'm in incognito mode and therefore not signed into my Google account. And I'm pretty sure that share link is for Fort Worth ISD only. So that's unfortunate. <laughs> um, but typically, they would see um, those Google slides that I had first. And then they'll see all of the rest of the questions underneath. You'll also notice that they can track their progress at the top here. So they have there are 12 total questions. And they'll be able to see as they go what question they're on. And if I have that um, automatically return scores, so as they go instantly, uh, they'll see their, their progress up here. So if they got it right, it would turn green. If they got it wrong, it would turn red. So that would be kind of an indication to them. Um, so as I'm going, I'm gonna answer a question. Because I don't have instant answer turned on, it's just showing me that it's completed with just a blue circle. So they'll know whether they've completed it or not. And so they would do all the questions and when they're done, they'll come down and submit. Yeah, I know, I didn't finish it. <laughs> okay, awesome. And so it's all done. Um, at this point in time, your students could leave this page on your teacher end. So we're back to teacher. Here's what I see. So first off, it did tell me how I did in my teacher preview. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. So I'm gonna click on that little up arrow. And now this is how my class is done. So I can come in and see, all right, first off, this student didn't answer questions one, six, nine, 10, and 11. Um, but on the other questions, she got them all wrong. <laughs> but I can come in here now as the teacher and I can manually grade them. So I'm looking at totals right now and I can go student by student here. And so I could look at this one student and click on question one. So in that space on their progress bar, question one, I can see that there was no answer submitted. So I can keep it at zero points. So I'm gonna click on that zero and notice that it filled it in red because I've now said it's not, just un, it's not just unfinished, but it's wrong. And then I also have the opportunity here to type some feedback. Now again, just like I was talking about Edpuzzle this morning, in guest mode, chances are your students are unfortunately never going to see that feedback. Um, when, <laughs> fingers crossed, when we get um, that data privacy agreement though, they are able to then see this feedback and respond back to it after the fact. So that's a really cool feature that hopefully we'll have turn or we'll be able to use in the future. So I could go ahead and I could type feedback. Okay, and send that. And then as they respond to me, it kind of looks like what it looks like in your text messaging app where I see what I've written and then they'll write something back and I'll see it over here. And then to get to the next question, I could either use the little arrow up here or I could click on the next question within their progress bar. And I can choose, is that right or wrong? Um, and I'll give that a correct answer there because that is the one that I wanted. Actually, that's not right. That's wrong. Oh, golly. Otherwise, that would have auto-graded. That's a science teacher in me. Um, so again, I can mark it wrong, and I can give feedback if I need. In this little side menu, I could also go between students. So right now, I only have obviously one who's taken it. But if I wanted to look at the next student's answer to question two, I would use this little down arrow. And right now, I think it's looking at my teacher preview. Okay, so I could use those little arrows to toggle between students or these arrows to toggle between questions. I can also switch it to full screen, so I'm not looking at anything else, which is nice to kind of focus in. So that's grading within this window. I also have the opportunity to kind of see all of the student responses in one snapshot. When I click on this one, here it's going to show me all of my student answers. And right now, obviously, I only have one, but it would show me little tiles. And so I can come in here and I can say, all right, I'll select one. It'll show me this little side menu, but I could select multiple answers and score them all at once by clicking on what score they receive. So again, this is like a continuum. I can decide between zero and one point, how much does this one earn? And so I can move it, I can give partial credit within. So kind of a cool thing.
All right, so I can either grade by looking at the totals or I can grade question by question by clicking on those questions and I'll see all student responses there. Okay. So that's what it looks like to assign the assignment and then to see their responses. I'm going to back out to where we started. I'll do that by clicking that little back arrow next to the name of my uh, GoFormative. Okay, and again, so this lands me on my formatives page. I also want to show you that, so here are all the formatives I've created. I can organize them by folder if I wanted to by adding a new folder. But I also have the option up here to click on classes. And in the future, <laughs> um, this is where I might go to do a Google Classroom sync. And this will, I have to give it permission first. Okay, so what this will do is it will pull all the Google Classrooms associated with your Google account. And you could select a class. No, I don't have, oh, I do. Okay. You could select a class um, and then it will pull in those students automatically. So that's kind of a nice thing to use in the future, just unfortunately not right now. All right. Um, like I said, right now we're just assigning to guests. We don't want students creating their own account. So we're not going to use any of these other features now, but hopefully next year I'll be able to do a whole new training about this where we can use all of these features. I also want to show you that along the top here, we have access to that tracker. Again, not something we can use now because I only have guests. Uh, completing this, but in the future, as students complete um, work and they are logged in, it will track their progress on the formatives themselves. So just looking from formative to formative, how are they doing? Or by standard. So it will show me here's 5.2a, here's how all of my students did underneath it. Um, so that's kind of a cool little feature once we get uh, the ability to use it with our Google Classrooms. Now keep in mind though that it will only show you the last two weeks of data. Um, it won't show you any, anything beyond that in the free version. The last option at the top just brings you back to that library. Again, I'm not super impressed, but feel free to explore it and see if you can find one that actually uh, relates to what you're teaching and maybe you'll be lucky, who knows. All right, um, with our last few minutes, I'm actually gonna log out of this account and see if I can log into my other one that actually has. Oh, that, that would not be my password. I'm guessing right now. Ha <laughs> ha, first time's a charm. Um, so this is my old account that has all of my different formatives already in it. I just want to show you what it could look like um, to use that instant answer feature. So I used to, again, notice that I have folders. That's really helpful. So I used to do, for example, weekly spirals. Let's make sure this is a good one. So some of those answers were multiple choice. Some of them were short answer. Again, all I did was pop in. In this case, I think they were pictures um, that I added um, questions over the top of. But as I'm taking this as a student, so I'm going to assign it to guest students. But I'm going to turn on. So I want to return scores instantly so we can see that. All right. So let's look at that now. I'm going to take that link. I'm going to copy it. And then I think I already have, yes, I do. Here's my incognito window. All right, so as a student, I'm going through and I'm answering. And when I select an answer, notice that it immediately tells me whether it's right or wrong. So in a multiple choice environment, this may not be the best because <laughs> what your students are going to do, they're not even going to read the question, they'll just click. But when it comes to something like this, where they have to write a response, this is really helpful for them to see um, whether they get it right or wrong. So they still have to work the problem out because it's, there's an infinite number of answers, um, but they can see right away whether they got it right or wrong. So that's with that instant feedback turned on, which is something that I like to do as a teaching tool. So I used to use GoFormative a lot as a center in my classroom. All right, so with all of that said, I think I got through all the things I had meant to get through. So I'm gonna open it up to questions at this time. And then while I'm doing that, 
you know what? I realized I, it's Monday <laughs> and I don't think that I put in, let's see, did I put in our new webinars? I did. Look at that. Okay. So there is our um, webinar attendance link. Feel free to fill that out. And then, like I said, I'll hang out with or to answer some questions. But otherwise, uh, feel free to go about the rest of your day. And hopefully I'll see you again later on this week.